Freedom, my friends. The night of the nights has come. The night of the nights. Open your heart and your mind. Move to the rhythm and dance into your own beautiful reality. Feel free and expect the unexpected. Hi guys, this is the advisor and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a story which is not really a local story, but it has a slight Jamaican connection. And I'm going to tell you that intrinsic Jamaican connection so that you guys can see how, how connected we all are. To the madness that's going on around us. I'm going to give you guys the full story, you know. But before I give you guys the full story, there is, I'm going to give you my commentary first ahead of the listeners. Remember, I always tell you guys that knowledge is power. And that nobody can fool you unless you want to be fooled. And that people normally put themselves in places where they can be fooled. And actually hope that somebody fool them. I also told you before that the two places that you are more susceptible to being fooled and conned and robbed is in the church and anywhere that politicians are. Preachers and politicians are the two greatest set of con men in existence today. And as I go through the story, if you can stomach the truth, you will understand what I'm saying. There is a pastor, guys, in Brooklyn, New York, who was than Sean Kingston. He did everything that Sean Kingston did, plus more, and he did it over the course of about 15 years. And what he stole was much more than Sean Kingston because it's over two million dollars. I'm talking about a pastor called Lamore Whitehead. Now, guys, let me tell you about Lamore Whitehead. The man went to a seminary and he studied for and got a certificate in ministerial studies. After him get the certificate, the man go become a marriage officer and then become a, I don't know what you call that post, but one where you are licensed to hold funerals and preach over people's dead body. Then the man go find a church and start preaching in that church, you know, far fee, of course. At the same time, he went and he became a licensed real estate broker and he was running that business while in the church he started taking people money because the collection wasn't enough so he charged people to hold private prayers for them in their house and he did that at 200 dollars a pop him come spend 15 minutes with you take him 200 dollars and him gone go around the corner do the same thing but eventually those monies were not enough for him. So I start to ask. He realized that there was a lady who works in the church who had who worked at a um, car dealership. At this dealership they sell top name brands like Land Rover and Lexuses and BMWs and so on. Uh, this pastor he did nothing more than start dating this girl. He would visit her home at times and he always wanted to go over to her house and when he go there he would borrow her computer as a matter of fact she had a office office laptop and her own personal laptop and he would always be going on the business laptop the one that her company gave her be no unbeknownst to her what he would go would go there and do, do is to take off all the names transfer onto thumb drives all the names of all the customers' credit cards because, you know, she worked at a dealership for top brand cars. And therefore, anybody who come in to buy a vehicle, 
they would have had to turn over their credit card, turn over their credit store, turn over their, um, their bank details, and so on and so forth, including name, addresses, and so on. So they could vet them for if, if they were qualified, if they would qualify for a loan. What he would do then is to take all the details, put it on a thumb drive, and then he go out and take out loans on top of loans in other people's name. And he would buy cars, expensive cars in other people's name. Because what, what happened, you know, is that these people are normally rich people. Because this place where this girl works, they don't sell used cars. They sell brand new hot cars. And most of these big customers can buy these cars cash. Whether, whether 100,000, 200,000 US, they can just buy cars cash. So what he would do is to get all the details and then go online and make purchases of motorbikes, cars, and take out loans for 50,000, 100,000, 500,000, 800,000, and so on. And he would pocket all of that money. He went further than that. Look how the man evil. He realized, say, hold on, but I am a real estate broker. Don't I have to get all of this information in order to give people mortgage to see if they qualify for a mortgage? So he went back now to his system and realized, yes, these people have good credit score. You know what he did with one of the men? I, I can give you several, several examples about just this one. There was a man who bought a house for $500,000. What he did is call in the man and say to him, listen, I have a scheme where I can get you um, money, um, $25,000 on top of every $200,000 that anybody put into my scheme. And this man trusted him. Why the man trusted him? Because this man, he had sold the man a good house because this man I think he either had won have some money or he had been had inherited some money and he just put all of it down five hundred thousand on this house. When um this pastor go to him and tell him say listen hear what give me two hundred thousand in thirty days I'm going to give you back two hundred and twenty five thousand dollars the man not, not do not more than go mortgage you the house and get two hundred thousand and give the two hundred thousand to Pastor Lamore Whitehead. The man said the reason why he didn't tell his family is because he knew um, he just wanted to surprise them when that extra twenty five thousand comes in. But guess what? After 30 days, nothing happened. What Lamar White did do, him just move him office, close down that office, open up sales elsewhere under a different um, company name, and him gone scotch free. Now, this man is stuck with a $200,000 loan, and the house had to be, they even put up the whole house back for resale. Because it was difficult, it was difficult for him to pay. Frankly, I don't know whether he had paid it off or not, but you know, I know the, the man was left stuck with that two hundred thousand dollar debt. That is how evil this pastor man is. Anyway, how him get caught now? Him thief a person identity, and him use the lady credit card. This lady's credit card details, and go buy a super bike. And then he was found riding the bike one day. And you know them are a foreign police. And when them start check and check and check. You know them going to go deep. So they looked into this specific fraud. And they realized that hold on. But this fraud. And what we, they realized about all of the, this a set of frauds. That they come out of the same office. The office where the is, um, the, is girlfriend used to work that car dealership they noticed that as within days or weeks after buying a car from that car dealership a fraud happens and all the frauds lead right back to lamar whitehead so he was taken into custody 
This was, of course, in 2005. He, he was sent on bail, but the, the sentence came up for trial in 2008. And at the trial, he was sentenced to 10 to 30 years for fraud, embezzlement, identity theft. And he was sentenced to 10 to 30 years imprisonment. But he spent just a little over five years in prison because he was released in um, 2013. And guess the first thing the man do when he come out of jail? Him pronounce himself bishop. You see how easy it is? Any little two-bit crook can just come call himself bishop or pope or any damn title he want to give himself. And people just follow him just like that. As I said before, people love to be fooled. And, and him, him, he didn't bother to go back to the church he was going when he committed the first set of frauds. He just start his own church. And just crown himself bishop and haul in a bag of gullible sheep. And start, start to defraud people even worse than before. Within six months of coming out of jail, them call him, 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 him earn a new name, the Bling Bishop. Call the way my thief and a defraud and money are run. The man just called, him not drive nothing more than the top of top Range Rover, top Porsche, top BMW, top Benz. Start dressed like a pimp in an all furry furry trench coat. And of course, one of the first thing him do also is go friend all of the big politicians them. Him, him friend the Attorney General, Letitia James. This the same one who, who is the Satan in a Donald Trump side. And of course, the mayor, Eric Adams, that drug addict, Eric Adams. And every other politician he, he could find in New York, he was their friend. And he used these people's name when he's going to take out loans or do anything. And, and he used it amongst his congregation too. Who him can make get big job, who him can, can make pay less income tax, who he can get make get make recommended for positions in um, government offices, etc. 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 And people pay him just to be in his company and just because they think he had this connection and link that could probably benefit them at some later point in their lives. No, this time him start live off of the congregation. He wanted them, he allowed them to, all of those with good credit scores, he would ask them to take out loans and give to him so he could invest for them and let him just take their money and tell them hard luck story. People run away with it. The scheme didn't work and everybody just forgive him because God sent him come. And them sorry for the God man. I would have given him more money if them have it. Here is what sink him the second time now. Which is this year, in a March, when him got caught for the second set of charges. There was a Jamaican nurse who went to live in the United States. She went to America back in the early 80s and had lived there ever since. The woman worked in a hospital in the United States and save up a little money for her pension. Eventually, the amount she saved up amounted to, amounted to 95,000 United States dollars. And she had it in the kitty and said what she would do is to come buy a home in Jamaica and settle down and live when she get, you know, when she retire. And this, at that time, she was 58 years old. So, you know, she was two years away from 60. Bishop, Bishop, the now self-crowned Bishop Lamar Whitehead decided that him want the money. Tell the lady that she must give him all of the money so he can invest it for her. And then we keep it for two years and when him, um, and then she will get it back and she will get five, um, fifty thousand on her money. The, the lady did not do more than hand her pastor all her life savings, entire life savings. Don't even tell her kids. It was when she ready for the money now and she asked him, the man cannot account for it. But she, she then at that time called in the police. 
And it's so when the police start investigating for this, that they realize how many more fraud he had committed. And they realize that all the man, the man have a, have a big house full of just BMW and other top-notch cars. One of him, his homes had an uh, entire basement full of cars, like a showroom. And he couldn't afford, he, he couldn't account for anybody's money. So them start investigating him again and all the charges, pan top of charges, pan top of charges, start come on. And that time now, a lot of loan companies, every bank and loan place in America, I look for him. So them take out loans in now, hundreds upon hundreds of other people's names. And all those case files were with the FBI. Well, the case was tried over a two-week period in March of this year. And it was concluded, I think, around March 11th or 12th. He was convicted of all charges and is to be sentenced the first week of July coming up. Based on all these charges, he can be... Um, um, he can be sentenced to up to 45 years. But we know him, August, what, whatever time them give him on paper, in four or five years, him back on the road again. And a thief again. Because there's an unending set of fools, of sheep out there, who once you name pastor, you can just sum them and take what them have. Because that's just how their brains were programmed from. They were children. But hold on, for you guys who stay with what I'm saying so far, here is the sweet part. I don't know if any of you guys have heard about a case in the United States there where a pastor was um, ambushed in his church by a group of gunmen made to lay down on his face. All his pockets were turned out and all the collection um plates were taken and they went away and they robbed every jewel where him have and watch ring chain which he had on a lot like Sean Kingston and them go and take everything off of the first lady too everything they were left with over a million dollars in cash and jewelry and so take a look at the clip and see this man of God a cover and a guan so in a God host where God supposed to protect him. How many of you have lost your faith because you saw somebody else die what you about to go through? Yo, yo, all right, right, right. All right, right. No, tell me, is this a man of God? A man of God. See people come in. For rob him church, gunman, and him don't rebuke them in the name of his God. Him don't stand up and rebuke them in the name of the Lord. Nor did he even expect the Lord to assist him. The little jelly back can man, him, him first duck and reach on the floor. All right, all right, all right, all right. And you know the saddest thing about it, after him lay down the like a little soppy little fussy. You know, I say no fussy me why I use, but that are the acceptable world by YouTube. Now, can you believe it that the next Sunday, the entire congregation was back in his church same way? And nobody stopped to think, say, this are the bishop, and God no give a rat's butt about him. Not about anything that happened in his church, and none of them could even stop and say, hold on. Hold a minute. Wait a minute point I'm making is when you're a sheep you're a sheep when you're a sheep you don't think because sheep are basically the most foolish animal on earth but let me leave that alone ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, uh, hold on listen I don't want none of uno go say a God cause that will happen to him so God just a give him what him deserve really so the question I would ask you therefore is so then the God stand up there and watch him defraud people. Watch people lose them credit score. Lose them house. Lose them money. And watch him do hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people that. And God not stop him. God not stop him. 
But God just loves teeth so much that he make him do all of them teeth in there and don't stop him. And then God give another set of teeth. Send another set of teeth. He come teeth from this teeth as punishment for him teething the decent people. That makes sense? I know for some of you it does. <laughs> but <laughs> The lesson to learn from this tale is do not think that because a man call himself preacher or pastor or stand at a pulpit and go on with all kind of histrionics and there means that he is a decent person or he has any morals or principles or ethics. Some of the most evil human beings in ex existence are right up there on the pulpit. And all I'm asking my viewers and subscribers to do is to think, think, if a man come and tell you that 2 plus 2 equals 5, no matter how you respect him, if you know that 2 plus 2 cannot equal 5, take him on on the matter. All you have to do is to not be so credulous, is to think, think, think. Emancipate yourself from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our minds. The power is within you to free yourself. Some of you simply don't want to be free and will hate me for saying what I just said. But so be it. I know there are people out there who, for whom I'm a breath of fresh air. People who want to wake up. And for you people, I say thank you for watching. Like, share. Leave a comment below and I look forward to seeing you in my next video.